what is up rockers welcome back here to another rise of kingdoms content i'm shinchi42 in today's video we are going to look into the skills talent tree and as well as in the archer talent tree now if you find this video to be super helpful and you want to see more rise of kingdoms content information about talent trees commanders and guides and everything that you need to know in rise of kingdoms do consider subscribing and turn your notifications on a quick gameplay that I want to share you guys in here today. We have been playing Infinite Galaxy. We are in the Nebula 15. I highly recommend you guys to check this new game out with us and create a new account and play with us in Nebula 15. In this video right now, as you can see, it's absolutely insane. You can see we're zeroing a whale, 43 million whale. God. Wow. Guys, you intercept the incoming got, feet. Got it, got it. I'm, I'm sending my ship right now. We're just pounding on it with a 70 plus million stack on it. This gameplay here is absolutely insane. It's absolutely wonderful. Very, very unique. Now, I have a gift code for you guys if you guys want to check this new game out. It's called Shinchi TV. Uh, links in the description, codes in the description. Go and download this now. I want to see you there with us. So let's go in and first talk about one of the skill here that I really want to highlight is called latent power. How do you guys understand latent power? I want you guys to leave it in the comment section below. First, is it a additional skill description or is it an additional skill of turn base ratio? So there's two choices. Is it choice A or is it choice B? And as we go through the video, I will explain to you what I've learned and what I did not know as well. I'm going to be honest to you guys. I'm not going to tell you guys that I knew this the entire time because the customer support has always like changed their answer to me before. So, so as you guys have also answered the in the comment section below, feel free to edit them as we go along with the video. The video that we're creating is really more of an educational base in here to help you guys out to understand how latent power works and as well as going into the archer tree, what is the most optimal archer tree and the best archer tree to use. We've done a lot of testings. You guys have seen some of the previous videos we did with Puddle Cakes. I've shared my, um, you know, talent tree in there, and actually there have been very, very, uh, very, very good results is what I can tell you. Now, um, this is the YSG testing that I've been doing. This is YSG that I have before. Don't really like it with doing some testings in here with this one. Um, going for the whistling arrow, not a good thing. The whistling arrow doesn't proc a lot. And then if you're doing a naked rage on a YSG, which is a very soft commander, I wouldn't recommend this doing a naked rage because by doing this, you allow YSG to absorb more damage and YSG is going to get knocked out quicker. So this thing, the testing that I have right now, this is what I highly, highly recommend for build for YSG. Going for the Phoenix Tail, which is absolutely insane. The proc of this is good. Now, I only had three out of four. But it's really good. There's battle testing that we have shown where we remove Phoenix Tail and we'll put more into clarity. And the difference result is just absolutely phenomenal with having Phoenix Tail. So also getting to the full quiver, you get full 1% per talent points into this. Getting the Razor Sharp, really good as well. Rejuvenate, really good. But let's talk about some of the things here that's very important that I want to really, really highlight from this video is the latent power. We've mentioned that it is an additional uh, damage, right? So one of the key things in here, back then, I thought it really worked on El Cid. But, you know, with the testing, you can't really, it's really hard to determine with the testing even. But El Cid, it has a um, direct damage factor in here for the active skill. But then it does say here, additional damage factor. Does it work? Yes or no? Let me know in the comment section below right now. Make an additional comment. Does latent power work on El Cid? Additional damage factor. So previously, when I talked to customer support back then, okay, 
they said, yes, anything that has a description of the additional damage factor, but it's actually incorrect, right? It's actually incorrect. Really, the real description for the um, latent power is based on the turn-based skill. So for El Cid, it would not work. Latent power would not work on El Cid, all right? Maybe it's just my own understanding that was, you know, trying to say, hey, if it says additional damage factor, then it will work, but it's not. Okay, so El Cid is not going to work. And anybody that has this additional damage factor, it's not really going to affect the latent power with that. Let's look at a basic commander, which is Kosunoki Masashige. Kosunoki Masashige will do a additional damage per second for two seconds. Now, this is a commander that will then benefit, yes or no, all right? This is a commander that would benefit with the latent power. Um, yeah, don't worry about why my setup in here. This is nothing because I don't really use my Kosunoki Masashige. I mean, if you see, we only got 693k kills there. Um, this is me. Like, I don't even think this is level six, level 60 yet. Yeah, this is nothing. So if you're going for Kosunoki's um, talent tree in here, I would highly recommend to do a latent power one because latent power would work with Kosunoki's skill. Um, that two, you know, two turns. Anything that has like one turn, two turn damage, those are additional damage. So like Minamoto would also work. It says your extra damage per second. So that would also work with the latent power. And another thing, for example, um, I don't know if player still uses Frederick. This is another one that will have a uh, effect for latent power. It says you're for the next three seconds. So are you guys getting the gist of it? Anything that has a one turn, two turn, three turn will affect with the latent power. I think uh, Pelagius, does it have it? No. Oh, yeah, it does. Pelagius will also have that effect if you put latent power because it has next two turn of damage in here. Now, if you're looking for the archers, since we're mainly talking about archers in here, if you're doing a Kosunoki Masashige, then this is the build that I would highly recommend for you. Um, I did put one out of three in the clarity, three out of three in rejuvenate, and then two out of four into the Phoenix Tail. And I'm telling you right now, we have done some testing. Maybe it only works for Cyrus, but we have done, done our testing in here that one out of three clarity is better. And because we removed the Phoenix Tail, you know, we ran out of like spots in your two, you know, put your um, talent points. I would never remove anything from Razor Sharp or remove anything for the Full Quiver and or remove anything to Venomous Sting, honestly. But this is where I kind of cheaped out clarity and as well as the Phoenix tail. This thing works well. Honestly, you might even just remove the clarity and just put it on the Phoenix tail because the probability of hitting the that Phoenix tail is absolutely incredible. Now, it's really weird because the whistling arrow procs so little, which is really, really odd because they're both 10%. But the RNG of the game really favors more into the Phoenix tail arrow. Here's what I would suggest to you. If you were questioning my build right now, if you're like, mm, I don't know. I would highly suggest test this build out first before you question it and come back to the comment section and let me know what you think about the build because this is absolutely one of the best builds that we have built here with the Archer setup. Now, understanding that, I mean, we've pretty much tackled a very good thing in here for the latent power, right? Understand that latent power is not just going to work with um, El Cid. And if you're going to think about like, oh, with the newer commanders, how else can I get my latent power? I mean, look at this. Ramses, also another commander that can benefit on latent power. Absolutely insane, right? Knowing that information. So, wow. Imagine this. Ramses is not, you know, a skilled commander. He doesn't have any skills in his attack. There's no latent power. So one thing that I've been doing now is I'm putting Ramses as a secondary to Cyrus. At first, I was like, oh, my God, I'm bummed about having Cyrus as a primary commander. Why did I got Cyrus to level 60? Actually, putting Cyrus as a primary is actually wonderful. So really great combination of synergy with Cyrus to create latent power works really well. And then having Ramses to second in here as a secondary for Cyrus. For the next two seconds, man, you're gaining the additional damage factor. Plus, then you're enhancing this with the latent power. And what? How much percentage is that again? That's additional 6%. Insane. Insane. I mean, you're going to cast this repeatedly over and over. And it's just going to get you to where you want to be into dominating into the field or whatever. If you end up doing a rally in here, honestly, you can do rally with Cyrus the Great. It will work really well. It's a versatile commander. can do anything, right? Open field.
rally. Those really works. Honestly, um, I wouldn't do garrison on this one because this is a win attack on the map as well. You don't get benefits, so it is going to be more into open field fighting or rallying. So there's only really a few archer commanders in here that would work really well with like the you know the latent power. Um, Herman is not one of them as well. This is a one second, one turn damage factor. But silencing for two seconds, latent power wouldn't work for this one. Neither for Artemisia. This is not going to work as well. So you have to look at it as a turn uh, turn base ratio. So even for Tamiris or Edwarda Woodstock, it wouldn't work as well. Because it doesn't have that ability to say, hey, you get hit by turn one, then you get hit another one on turn two, then you get hit by another one on turn three. So that's my talent uh, suggestion to you guys for the commanders and giving you guys some suggestions as well what to do and not to do really avoid um avoid the the one that i showed you here in ysg that we have input it on here we basically have a testing setup in here um avoid this naked rage and if you guys are wondering really why you're not doing feral nature it's just like i don't really like the feral nature it's not a good skill to have um you're adding five points on there and it's just not good because you're having relying on that probability now again if you would see my zoom 2 um actually i don't even have anything for feral nature in there as well i wonder who has feral nature okay here so we have feral nature here for herman now would i do this this is like a long time ago i don't even use herman i wouldn't do this setup imagine you're 10 percent to add it on rage and it's just insane because you're putting five talent points wasted into relying into um, that RNG that doesn't even prog a lot. Um, it's not good, honestly. I would rather have the Phoenix Tail. Based on this testing that we have done, the Phoenix Tail really work amazing. It's just really insane to even tell you guys this. It's just the probability is just so insane. Now, you might see a little bit different build for um, Edward of Woodstock in here. As you can see, I did have a whistling arrow in Edward of Woodstock but in this one is a special case scenario because for Edward of Woodstock I have to really remove anything that would regenerate any um, rage so I did remove the rejuvenate I did remove the razor sharp so that I can continuously stack at a very high poison stack with Tomiris so if I do that set up um, Edward and Tomiris that's a build that I use but then if I, of course, I'm going to be using a Edward and YSG. I don't know if I have a preset of this one. So yeah, I would, if I would do an Edward and YSG, um, I would do a little bit of a change in here, actually. I wouldn't avoid this because back then I didn't realize how uh, unvaluable this thing is. So if I would do a setup in here for Edward of Woodstock for you that you know have been playing with Edward of Woodstock, we can just kind of mock run in here. I would definitely put a lot into, into here. Um getting into that little v-shape area and get into this right focus on the den get the clarity right i would just do yeah two out of three is fine it's not a big deal honestly i'm not a big fan of the clarity anyway it does give you four percent what's another two percent anyway i would rather i would rather rely on to the phoenix tail that procs really often it's really really nice um you do get the rage in here, really works well. I would avoid this again. I don't like to rely on too much on the feral nature or into the whistling arrow, which based on the experience that we have done, it's really have re you know is not as you know triggers as much as the phoenix tail arrow. Again, try your own testing as well with all the talent trees that we're suggesting to you. Again, the razor sharp, amazing, and as well as the full quiver, those are some of the key key cheap budgeted talent tree that you definitely need to put for your archer setups in there now if you're wondering like hey i'm an infantry like you know what do i do with guan yu um here's the talent tree that i have for guan yu that's actually insane um i go to the feral nature for this one because it's a case-by-case -case scenario i don't really have any choice i do not want to go into here well i don't really fight all cavalry all the time right so i just try to avoid that for myself and i don't go for the snare torrents because i don't really want to uh, input into marching speed in here because why because i play my guan yu when i fight wars i don't have a lot of wiggle room to fight like marching here point a to point b now if you're doing a um, arc of osiris then it will be a different setup you will want to have the marching speed because it's going to be a different gameplay 
Um, I do have the Conquering in here. Just reduces counterattack damage taken by 9%. I have it here. I hold the line just one. Really not great, you know, relying into this. But majority of the, the stuff in here is in skill for Guan Yu because we want to, you know, make it a glass cannon. And of course, having the 6% health in here is really good as well. But like I said, if this is going to be an Arc of Osiris, I will have to switch this up, change everything up, and we'll focus more into marching speed. And of course, um, reducing the marching speed of the enemy there would be really beneficial as well. So this is more of the canyon build that I have and short distance fighting as well. So different situations, different scenarios, and different talent trees as well. So besides that, guys, hopefully this is, video has been very helpful. Looking at Osman, nope, nope, latent power would not work. Um, hopefully you guys have learned something really great in here learning about latent power primarily from this video latent power has to be turn by turn before you can actually benefit right additional skill damage for each turn will allow you to benefit with the latent power anyway guys thank you guys for watching let me know what is your favorite talent trait that you have seen today anyway i'll see you guys again next time rockers remember rockers never die make sure to check out our merch and i will see you again next time